and let me share the slides. These are these slides are from your manual. So hopefully, uh, all of you have got, got the manual. Uh, mostly you have. So, uh, uh, have any Interruptions are possible. <coughs> so uh, let me share the slides. <coughs> can you uh, hear me? Can is my voice is clear? And uh, can you see the slides? Even you can confirm. Yes, sir. Can was hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. And you have a slide that you have Yes, sir. Can you see these slides? Okay. okay, let us uh, with today's uh, job that is uh, we are going to discuss experiment number three. Chale, theek hai. So, is, is slides are already shared. Hai, so, you should uh, download these slides. So, these are actually from the manual. So, those who are having manual, so they can uh, open them. Uh, this experiment number three, I think it's page number 29. And those who are not having manual, so they can. Uh, see these slides and uh, accordingly we can discuss. So experiment number three that we are going to discuss today. That is to make the study of Pelton wheel and turbo impulse turbine. So in this experiment. We will not perform any anything or will not. Uh, be. Doing. Experiment is just the study of the mentioned machine. So in this, and then may focusing on uh, the Pelton wheel and the turbo turbine. So first of all, uh, these turbines are used. So we know that that uh, electricity is produced by various sources in the world, like uh, oil, gas, coal, uh, nuclear, hyd nuclear. Power and similar also there. So one of the important source which is utilized in the world to generate electricity is hydropower. Any hydropower plant uh, has uh, power. Uh, any hydropower uh, station uh, plant or any hydropower project has the power house. And uh, one of the important machinery of the power. So it is, it is a turbine which actually converts. The hydraulic energy of water into uh, into mechanical energy uh, in the form of rotation of the shaft, and then further this energy is converted is transferred to the generator in the field, which generates electricity by converting mechanical energy into the process continues. So power generation means production electricity, energy, which is the most useful form of energy and can be easily transmitted from one place to another place by using cables. You know it. The component of the hydropower plant with turbines and generators are installed. It is called powerhouse. So as I mentioned, now uh, uh, design, as I mentioned, studying the Pelton wheel and the turbo impulse turbine. I've also shared uh, on Monday the video recording of the study of these. So hopefully you have downloaded those that video and must have seen that. So in there uh, in the laboratory. Uh, we, uh, in the video, it is shown that how the uh, Pelton wheel and the turbo turbine looks like, how their components are arranged, and their functions are also made in, the, in that video. So you should also go through that video. Also, you can search on internet about the 
uh, regarding video uh, of uh, the spiral turbines like pelton wheel and pulse turbine we have more knowledge regarding this so first of all what is meaning of the study of a machine you should note it or write it or whatever you like so study of a machine means number one the physical inspection of the machine so as a part of the study uh, uh, because now you know it's online classes but when you are on campus so uh, you go to the machine physically and you see it's uh, uh, how it looks like its uh, arrangement of its components and uh, then we learn the working of the machine working of the components of the machine etc so this is about the study study of a turbine means physical inspection of the physical inspection of the machine study of a machine means physical inspection of the machine and uh, as a part of the physical inspection we will learn the working of the machine that we are going to study uh, the components and the arrangements of the machine and the arrangement working of each component of the machine and functions of each component of the machine so these are this is part of the study of the machine physical inspection of the machine working of to know the working of the machine to know the components and the arrangement of the machine functions of each component of the machine and then working of each Um, so this is about the uh, the study of the machine that uh, you have to carry out in this experiment. So first of all, what is a turbine? Because uh, uh, turbines uh, study, you should know first of all what is a turbine. So turbine is a hydraulic machine which converts hydraulic energy into mechanical energy. and uh, hydraulic energy is driven to the turbine which is available in the rivers and in the reservoirs in the form of head and the discharge whereas the rotation of the shaft of the turbine gives a feeling of the mechanical energy so actually whenever we construct a hydropower plant we do it on a river or a stream so i we use the available flows of the river or head of the river head of water in the river our water level in the river or we make a reservoir to increase the head thing to uh, to produce the power there are two types of the turbines impulse turbine so we also call it and other is the pressure reaction turbine sorry for this uh, interruption continuously but uh, as i already started and start mention that uh, there is some internet issue so maybe interruptions are expected during the lecture so i will share the recording later i will already have recorded this with the other section so you can also go through it so let me just quickly go through uh, about this study so we have two types of turbine the impulse turbine or velocity turbine and the reaction turbine and the pressure turbine. as far as the impulse turbine is concerned so it is a type of turbine which utilizes the total energy which converts the total energy of water into kinetic energy in the form of jet of water by providing nozzle at the end of the pan this jet strikes on the buckets of the wheel of the turbine 
which applies an impulse force on the buckets and a torque on the runner of the turbine. So as a result of which it, it rotates that turbine runner. So, so as the runner is key to the shaft of this mechanical, uh, so this mechanical energy is transmitted to the shaft. And in the field, shaft of the turbine is coupled with the shaft of the generator, and hence mechanical energy is produced by the turbine, and uh, it, is, it is transmitted to the generator, and generator uses it to uh, convert it to electrical energy. So if you see this diagram, this typical uh, this layout of laboratory layout of the pulse turbine. So if you see, we have uh, the underground reservoir from where water is being delivered to the turbine. We have the pump, we have the suction pipe, and this is the pen stock. This is a pipe which conveys water from the reservoir. Of the pipeline in impulse turbines, if you see, there is a nozzle. If you see, this is a nozzle. The purpose is, of this nozzle is to convert all the energy of water either the pressure energy kinetic energy into only one form that is let uh, 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 that is kinetic and this is done by creating the jet of water so by with the help of nozzle a jet of water is created and this jet of water has very high kinetic energy and have very high velocity and, and because it is at most uh, it is uh, exposed to atmosphere it has no pressure so this is how Impulse turbine converts all type of water energy into kinetic energy in the form of jet of water. And sometimes we have more than one jets, more than one nozzle, more than one jets. So we can have more than one jet in that case. So by convert by providing the jet or having the jet of water or jets of water, nozzles are nozzles, nozzle are nozzles. We can convert the total energy into energy in the impulse turbine. Now what this jet does, it strikes the buckets of the runner of the turbine. And when it strikes, it, it, it causes an impulse force on the bucket. And as a result of it, the runner of the turbine rotates. And runner of the turbine is, is, uh, uh, is provided with the shaft at the center. So this rotation of the runner is transferred to the shaft. And further, this shaft is, is joined with the generator. So this energy is further transferred to the generator. And generator transmit, uh, tra uh, converts the mechanical energy into hydraulic energy into electrical energy. This is how this process goes and this is how impulse turbine it works. So same thing is explained over here. Now jet of, jet of water is, is open to atmosphere. So the pressure energy of the jet is zero and it, it only has very high kinetic energy. And that's why impulse turbine is also called as a velocity turbine. The reason is, is that in impulse turbine, the total energy is converted to kinetic energy and you know that kinetic energy as mv the, it's only the velocity energy we also call it because the impulse turbine utilizes velocity of the jet to uh, do the work to rotate the runner that's why it's also called as the velocity turbine there are types of the impulse turbine that we have to discuss in this uh, experiment three one is a pelton wheel and another is a turbo turbine now first of all pelton wheel pelton wheel is named after lester a pelter who developed it in California and in Pelton wheel, the total energy of water available energy of the fluid or water is converted into kinetic energy in the form of jet of water by providing nozzle or nozzles. As I mentioned, we can have more than one nozzle, we can have more than one jet. Jet of water strikes on the splitter of the buckets. So actually, uh, uh, if you see this diagram, so these are the buckets of the Pelton wheel. This is the runner of the Pelton wheel and these are the buckets. If you see this, this uh, elevation of the bucket, so you see at the center there is a splitter. So the bucket of the Pelton wheel has uh, two compartments, uh, two you can say parts and at the center there is a splitter, a sharp edge you can say. So what happens? The jet of water first strikes, as you can see this, this is the side view of this runner. You can see this, it's a uh, two uh, two cups of the uh, the bucket of the Pelton wheel and at the center there is a splitter. So jet of water starts jet of water uh, strikes on the splitter of the bucket which are mounted on the periphery of the wheel. The laboratory layout of the Pelton wheel is to be drawn in the space given in figure 3.1. So in this space this laboratory layout we have to draw 
which shows the uh, underground reservoir which is also the tail race level trl means tail race level tail t a i l r a c e tail race l e v l tail race level are uh, the underground reservoir this is a laboratory layout so we have the suction pipe to this water to convey to the turbine we have the penstock pipeline which conveys water from the pump to the turbine and at the end of the pipe this penstock we have the uh, nozzle attached a short converging tube to convert total energy into kinetic energy in the form of jet of water we have the spear head this is called spear headed needle which is uh, used to control flow rate in the nozzle so it can move forward and backward direction with the help of this rotation of handle we have the bottom gauge to measure the pressure at the base of the nozzle These are the components of the Pelton wheel that we have to discuss one by one, and also are shown in the laboratory layout that we have to make, and also in the picture some of the components are shown. First of all, nozzle. As I shown in the figure, it is a short converging tube fitted at the end of penstock. The nozzle is so designed that the contraction ratio is optimum for least losses, hence maximum efficiency. So this is a nozzle, as you can see, it's a short converging tube. and its uh, contraction ratio is so designed that we have minimum contraction losses and maximum efficiency the purpose is to convert total energy of water into kinetic energy in the form of jet of water spear head needle it is a conical needle kept inside the nozzle and can axially move in the forward and backward direction by turning the handle accordingly so in the laboratory remember this we have the handle attached as you can see the diagram this is the spear head needle a conical shape needle kept inside the nozzle and there is a handle outside if you but in the field this is there is no handle in the field it is a governor we call it is a machine which automatically controls the movement of this spear head in needle that is called governor So it acts uh, like a valve for the nozzle. The backward and forward movement of the nozzle increases and decreases the area of flow respectively, which in turn changes the flow rate through the nozzle. So the function of the spear head needle is to uh, control the flow rate in the nozzle. So if it it will move forward, it will reduce the area of flow and the flow through the nozzle will, flow through the nozzle will reduce. And if it moves backward. the area of flow will increase and the flow through the nozzle will increase so in this way it will work it will work function is to regulate the flow through the nozzle and keeping that constant diameter of the jet so hum is liye isko provide karte hain taaki jab discharge kam ya zyada karna pade to hum kar sakte hain isko move karke aur jet ka jo dia hai wo same rehna chahiye isliye isko hum provide karte hain then the runner another pelton wheel consists of number of double cup buckets hemispherical or elliptical in shape fixed to the periphery of the wheel at equal spacing the buckets may be bolted to the wheel if diameter is too large or they are cast monolithically for small sizes to ya to bolt ke zariye lagaye jate hain bucket runner ke sath ya monolithically unko cast kiya jata hai small size mein each bucket has a sharp edge at the mid in the radial direction called the splitter the jet strikes each bucket at the splitter and is divided into two parts and as a result of this uh, we avoid any unbalanced thrust on the shaft so runner and its section is shown in figure 3.3 to see this figure 3.3 this is the runner and these are the buckets mounted on the run this is the elevation of the bucket as you can see we have the splitter at the center and there are two part and you can see that side view we have the two parts of the uh, the at some angle it is provided as it meets to the uh, sides of the bucket so jet strikes at the center of the splitter at the center at the splitter we divide the jet into two equal parts one half 
glides over the one part of the bucket and one other half of the jet glides over the other and the reason to divide this is so that the axial thrust on the shaft or on the wheel should be eliminated should be minimized the splitter of the bucket is to bear the impact of the jet because first the jet has to strike the splitter so hence it is made very strong therefore it is not practical to provide a sharp edge and zero angle at zero angle at the center of the bucket usually this angle is kept 3 to 6 these are the uh, buckets of the pelton wheel and you can see at the center is the splitter to split the jet into two halves the runner is made up of brass and its internal surface is made smooth to minimize the friction losses so in figure 3.5 as you can see you have to sketch these orthographic projections for the bucket of the pelton wheel you have to these projections you have to make in this space first of all elevation so you can see this shows the thickness of the bucket at the center this line shows the splitter and this uh, dash circle shows the jet striking at the splitter and these two arrows showing half of the jet is going this way and half of the jet is going other way this is a section so it will look like this we have bucket in two compartments splitter this is a jet of water striking the splitter figure 3.5 function of the rudder is to convert the hydraulic energy into mechanical energy and transmit it to the mechanic uh, and transmit this mechanical energy to the shaft if you see this at the center of this rudder we have the key we have the shaft will rotate along with that the shaft will also rotate so this is how hydraulic energy of water is converted into mechanical energy by the rudder and then it is transmitted to the shaft for for the use yahan bearings hoti hain shaft aur is space ke darmiyan jiske upar shaft rotate karti hai so it is a rotating rod of the turbine rotate uh, supported by the runner is key to the shaft which is made up of mild steel function is to transmit the mechanical energy from the rudder to the braking drum and in the laboratory remember this if you see the diagram this shaft is connected to the braking drum because was in the field we don't have the generator so braking drum is used to measure the brake horse power output power of the turbine hum isse measure karte hain so laboratory mein shaft jo hai braking drum ke sath connected hai aur field ke andar it is connected to the generator it transmits the mechanical energy from the runner to the braking drum in the laboratory and it transmits this mechanical energy to the generator in the field next the casing the cover provided around the runner is known as casing it is made up of cast iron its upper part can be easily removed as it is bolted with the lower part the pressure of the water in inside the casing is atmospheric so remember this if i show this diagram figure again so this is all the casing this is the casing it has lower part and upper part you can see this the upper part is bolted to the lower part inside the casing we have the runner we have buckets we have the uh, we have the nozzle etc now this casing is not an air tight casing ye aapne dekha matlab ki pelton wheel ki jo casing hoti hai wo air tight nahi hoti isme atmospheric pressure hota hai there is no absolute pressure so the casing of the pelton wheel has no no pressure it's only atmospheric pressure it has it is not an air tight casing function is to so it is also mentioned that casing does not casing does not maintain hydraulic pressure as i mentioned it does not maintain hydraulic pressure following are the functions of the casing to provide safety around the runner to avoid accident so when the runner is moving so uh, there should not be any accident uh, 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 from outside uh, some thing can fall into it and can damage the runner or some other haphazard thing can occur so avoid this 
to avoid this we provide the casing number 2 when the jet of water is produced and strikes the bucket there are a lot of splashes of water generated so because of the casing those splashes they remain in the casing and also further after striking with the bucket water is guided to move to the tear race channel so this is the function of the casing breaking drum it's a rotating drum used to measure the brake horse brake power of the turbine or output power of the turbine one side of the drum clamp for the application you know break the form we have to sketch the diagram for this function of the braking drum is the brake horse power or output power of the turbine so hum isme kya karte hain ki hum jab hum experiment perform karte hain pelton wheel ka iski plan us pe dekh lete hain ki w into l ye to isko use karte hain hum for further brake horse power nikalte hain tachometer it is used to measure the rpm of the turbine or runner of the turbine or shaft of the turbine is attached it is attached on the far end of the shaft by belt and gives the direct reading function of the tachometer is to to measure the unbreak and variation unbreak means that we also this to use karte hain aapke measure karne ke liye and when we apply the torque and uh, brakes then and at the brakes position in the figure so this is a tachometer so this is a tachometer uh, shaft as you can see. and there is another pulley attached with the shaft so the belt on it so when the shaft rotates with the help of belt this pulley rotates and the tachometer gives the reading of the rpm directly of the shaft so brakes are applied to the rotating braking drum a lot of heat is generated because of the lead which may which may burn the laser brake shoes so in order to keep the braking drum at cool state fresh water is circulated through the chamber in the braking drum some consists of half inch meter pipes there are two type pipes inflow pipe well and outflow pipe are the discharge pipes if you see the diagram Again, again, so that we can close it and close it. And there is an outflow pipe to take the used water out. And this way, water, fresh water, keeps on circulating to avoid the burning of leather brake shoes during the experiment when the brakes are being applied for long duration. This is the bottom gauge. So, bottom gauge is, is used to measure the pressure head of water at the base of the nozzle. so the x is plus the elevation correction so if you see this diagram this uh, picture this is a bottom gauge and, and is it attached to the pen stop if you see another figure that we have to make in 3.4 bottom gauge and we have this pen stock and the nozzle and, and this is the gauge attached just before the pen stock and the base of this nozzle at the, at the center line of pipeline you can see we need the pressure but gauge gives you the pressure at the centroid of the gauge so there is a difference between the uh, we can measure the distance between vertical distance between the center of pipeline and the center of the gauge that is called elevation correction and we know we know that the pressure at this point Point will be more than the pressure at the centroid of gauge. So center pe of center line of pipeline the pressure zyada hoga, because water is me upper ko jayega to yaha pressure kam ho jayega. So humne ek pressure ko add karna hai. Isliye hum isko add karte hain. Pressure pressure hai, wo kya hota hai? Gauge pressure and elevation pressure. Where where is the distance? That is the vertical distance between center of nozzle base and center of the bottom gauge. That is elevation pressure. in the space showing this 
warden gate and the elevation correction, uh, nozzle and the pen stop in the jet. The function is to measure the pressure head at the base of the nozzle. This is the so this is about the Pelton B and the company and the figures that we have to make in this uh, design in this experiment. So this is the screen over here. the other side by gliding over the internal curved surface of the bucket as there is no splitter in the mid. So one thing is uh, there is no splitter in the bucket of the turbo turbine. So bucket of the turbo turbine is different from, from the pattern wheel. So one difference is this. The other thing is that the jet does not end and leaves from the other. So as a result of this, the jet is not divided into two parts, so there may be axial thrust on the turbine shaft. So the difference is that in turbo turbine, there may be axial thrust on the shaft, unlike the Pelton wheel. The runner is formed from single costing turn integral buckets or blade. It is usually a bronze and a cost steel. For photograph of the runner of the turbo turbine, is so you can see. The buckets are monolithically costed with the runner of jet enters from one side and leaves from the other side. Another difference is the construction of the turbo turbine is similar, similar to the Pelton wheel, except the and jet does not just here. If you see the Pelton wheel, so jet of water. Strikes normally to the shaft. This shaft is out of plane, or this jet is to both angle 90 degree. But in case of turbo turbine, jet does not strike normal to the shaft. It has some other angle. Jet does not strike normal to the, the shaft. Shape of the bucket is hemispherical or spoon shape without splitter. So, one difference I have told you. So, the jet of water enters from one side and leaves from the other side. You have to sketch the also. Graphic uh, projections for the jet we did for the pattern wheel. Here we have to make a so, splitter. Nahi hai. This is a single spoon shaped bucket as you can see this. The jet enters from one side and leaves from the other side. And you have to make the side view. This side view is not This is the side view that you have to make. You can see the outer edge and you can see the inner edge. Is with the so this is the projections that we have to make for the bucket of the cargo turbo. This is about uh, uh, the discussion. So this is a table that you have to fill as a part of an observation. Uh, you can see the video. Hopefully in that video, some of the information is mentioned, so you can note it. If not, so then you can wait it till you come on campus. So during your on campus psychomotor assessment, you can fill this table. You should note the number of buckets of the runner for Pelton wheel interrupter discount of the boarding gauge for both elevation correction for both least count of the tachometer minimum and maximum reading of the tachometer so these things should be noted as a part uh, of this uh, process then uh, you have to write down the main components of turbo turbine they are same as the uh, pelton wheel so the pelton wheel components are the same as the components are the same as the इसी तरह यू हैव टू डिफरेंशिएट बिटवीन पैल्टर व्हील एंड टर्बो टरबाइन जो जो डिफरेंस है बताएं वो यहां आप लिखेंगे सो दिस इज अबाउट टुडेस जॉब एक्सपेरिमेंट एनी बॉडी हैविंग एनी क्वेश्चन प्लीज आस्क यस एनीबॉडी हैविंग एनी क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम टुडेस जॉब 
So you should go through it, download the slides, uh, get the manuals, and recording will be shared later, so you can go through that recording also, so that, that you can uh, uh, better about this uh, Pelton wheel and that rotor bar and the, the components and the warranty. Yes, any question from your side? So for question, I will move the attendance. So I will directly take attendance on LMS uh, and those who are registered on LMS, so the attendance will be marked. And those who are not registered, so uh, they should get registered themselves to, to get the attendance marked. 